I'm going tone hunting. Would you like to come along? Sure you would. Why would you click on this video if you didn't want to come along tone hunting with me for one of the most legendary guitar tones ever recorded, Slow Dancing in a Burning Room by John Mayer. There's a lot of nuance to this guitar tone in particular. I'm gonna go heavy into my own arsenal of gear to try and get as close as I can to this tone while keeping in mind that really tone is in the fingers. So nobody can truly match a guitar player's tone, but you can get damn close if you try really hard like I'm about to. So without further ado, let's go chase the burning room guitar tone. Now as far as amps go, I don't have a Fender, but I believe this sounds a lot like a Fender Deluxe or some sort of Fender-y sound. So the closest thing I have to that is a PV Classic 30, which I think does Fender better than a Fender does in certain ways. So we'll take a look at the amp settings first. The reverb is about halfway, which is pretty extreme for this amp, but as you know, with Slow Dancing in a Burning Room, that clap of the spring reverb is a really integral part, and I found about one o'clock or 12 o'clock in this range is where you can get that ideal sound. The bass is dialed back a little bit, the middle is pushed up a little bit, about one o'clock, and the treble is about the same place as the mids. Again, a pretty neutral palette for a stratty sound that I like with this amp. Nothing fancy here, I don't think, unless you have a $10,000 microphone, you should use anything other than an SM57 on a guitar amp. As you can see here, I have my trusty Fender Strat. That is my axe of choice for this particular tone chasing project. I'm sure you could use other S-type guitars, but this is the one that I have on hand that I think gets the closest. I've got some Planet Tone pickups in here instead of the Texas Specials that came with it. They're a little bit punchier and higher on the top end and a little bit meatier on the bottom end. So they're great. And as we know, we are going to be in the neck middle split position. So this is like the holy grail of Strat positions when it comes to this particular iconic guitar tone. And I don't think anything else really matters as far as the tone would or the gauge of string. I think it's really about the sauce that you play this with as well as a little bit of help from the gear that you use. So now let's get to the main attraction that's really gonna help us out. We're about 80% there, but the 20% left to get from where we are now to the actual burning room guitar tone, that is very difficult to shrink that gap. So I have a tool that I'm going to implement. It's called the Clover from JHS Pedals. There's a link down in the description if you'd like to check out this pedal. Essentially what it does is gives you another palette of EQ options as well as boosts your signal in not a typical boost type of way, at least to my ears. It really brings out a sort of articulation that I haven't found in other EQ pedals like this. This definitely feels like a studio tool to me because it has this balanced output for an XLR if you need it. You have lift capabilities for the output and your low cut and three different options regarding the settings. So you can go no EQ, which essentially turns this into a sort of clean boost. Then you can go with a no mids option where you're just using the bass and treble to make further tone adjustments. And then there's the full EQ, which obviously utilizes all three knobs. So I'm gonna go with the full EQ because I think there are different frequencies that need adjustments based on listening to slow dancing in a burning room. And when I think about these tone adjustments, it makes me wonder about tonal character of the split bass middle pickup and what the heart of that sound is all about. So here's the sound that we have without the pedal engaged, just guitar into the amp. No EQ settings in the post-production software, straight up guitar tone. So it's already a great tone. I think there is a little bit we can do before we kick on the JHS Clover, which is turn down this tone knob a tiny bit to roll off some of the top end because I think this thing needs a tiny bit of breathing room that we can bring back later if we need to. So I'm gonna pull off some of the guitar tone on this dial here. And now we're gonna go through a couple of these JHS features First, we'll start with the no EQ option. So like I mentioned, we can just boost this guitar sound like so. Mm. 
So again, we can now hear exactly what we dialed in much more clearly. And like I said before, this has a sort of articulation to the pedal that really is nice. It's, I'm hearing a little bit more of my fingers and every note that I play feels a little bit more delicate you know, regarding the guitar part, so that makes me pay attention to the tone a little bit more, like I mentioned. When I say tone is in the fingers, it really is about the sound of the gear only gets you so far, your fingers really have to take you that extra mile. So now that we have that under our fingers, I'm gonna move straight over to the full EQ option, and we are going to start shaping, shall we? So the split neck and middle position is an out of phase pickup selection that is what this sound is built upon. And this is mentioned by John Mayer himself in multiple different guitar media outlets. So I know it's definitely this pickup selection. I think the difficult thing with nailing this guitar tone is having the right amount of low end and high end. So the mids, I think the best way to go with those is to just, my general rule of thumb is to boost the mids pretty much with any guitar tone that I use because a guitar is typically a mid-range friendly instrument and that's sort of where it sits in every song mix. So with the boosted mids, we have something like this. Essentially with this pickup selection, you sort of want high end in the low end and low end in the high end, if that makes sense. So I think it's already a low endy type of guitar setup here between the Strat and the PV amp. So I'm gonna actually roll off some bass and maybe push up the treble. We'll see where that gets us. Okay, this is feeling really nice. So this is another benefit of having this pedal is it's allowing me to have a little bit of effortlessness when it comes to playing because this is a really delicate tone so you can't be too gnarly with your attack. And obviously, I, I don't know if I mentioned this is a finger style song, so you're playing this with your fingers. You can have this tendency to pluck the, uh, the strings, especially with this John Mary style. So this pedal sort of removes the low end boomy frequencies in the bass, fortifies the mid range, and smooths out the top end. We're almost there, I think. I'm gonna keep going a little bit and kind of plinking around. I think we're a little bit extreme on a couple of these. I'm gonna get a tiny bit closer to 12 o'clock see where we're at here. That's feeling pretty good. See, the articulation is so important because you want the warmth and the presence that is basically what the pedal is giving us. And also you want that punchiness and the abrasiveness of that clap. So it's really, really feeling nice right here. And it's almost giving a quality to the reverb that I didn't hear before. And really I'm testing it off this <laughs> first couple of notes. Pull this up a tiny bit, tiny just the little intricate changes are really heard in this. I think we might have it. Just for fun though, I'm gonna grab a pick. I wanna see what this sound, the sound is so cool, I just kinda wanna rip on it for a second. <laughs> Let me 
change the bass tiny bit down. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. <laughs> It just needs a little bit less mid-range, tiny bit more treble, tiny bit more bass. You know what it is? The interesting thing there? Hear that? That sound, as opposed to that sound, it's about hitting that fret almost like a mistake, but I hear that in the recording. Listen. I mean, that doesn't really have to do with the pedal or the amp or the guitar. That's a finger tone thing that I just noticed, but it was because of the gear that I noticed it. Can't even see if I can get it again. Ha <laughs> And just for reference, this is where we started. Oh, that's nice. Well, what do you guys think? I'd say we got pretty close to the Burning Room guitar tone. And I guess the only thing left to do now is lay the tone in to a full band context and start off without the clover engaged and then turn it on and see what a difference it makes on our tone. And then, you know, this is such a fun progression to play over. I'm just gonna rip my own rendition of slow dancing in a burning room. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to check out the Clover from JHS Pedals. And until next time, keep shredding.